This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream. Sign up today with the link in the description and get access to my streaming service Nebula for free. So a bunch of YouTubers just released a children's album that uses strange rhythmic concepts like odd time signatures and tuplets and metric modulation. Metric modulation. Seven four. Polyrhythm. Seven four. Polyrhythm. Quintuplets. Polyrhythm. You know, all the things that kids like. The idea here was that every YouTuber would select a popular children's song and then use it kind of as a vehicle for introducing children or adults to unfamiliar musical concepts using familiar melodies, kind of as a guide. The whole project was organized by Alan Stewart, who does some of the music over at the Numberphile channel, and you can check him out talking about some of the mathematics of these rhythms over on the Numberphile podcast right now. The album entitled uh, Tuplets for Toddlers has been released as a charity fundraiser, so you can go check that out wherever you stream your music right now. But I thought it would be fun to get all the YouTubers together and listen to each other's contributions to the album on camera for the first time. In other words, do a React video. Alrighty, it's 11.28 a.m. and it's time for my daily dose of YouTube reacting. Let's react to some music. Itsy Bitsy Spider by Sean Crowder. Sean Crowder. Sean Crowder, Itsy Bitsy Spider. Uh, Itsy Bitsy Spider. Check one, two, check one, two. Hey, hey, hey. Hey everyone, I'm Sean Crowder and I did an arrangement of Itsy Bitsy Spider in quintuplets, so five notes per beat. These five notes are divided into groupings of three plus two, which gives it a kind of lopsided, uneven and swing feel which you can hear in the melody. I also quite like how the bass line turned out on this one which has this kind of triplet feel going over the quintuplets and I wanted something that was kind of like a 12-8 Afro-Cuban bass line, a kind of triplety feel, but I also wanted it to gel with the quintuplets. And there's also a five against three polyrhythm later in the song, if you want to listen for it in the xylophone, it's playing this rhythm ba 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 over the quintuplets, and it's not the main focus of this part, it's kind of a background part, but I do kind of like the playful energy it brings into this. That's it for this tune, I hope you enjoy. Okay, simple percussive start. <laughs> That's so good. really disorienting. It's playful because of the melody, but it gets down to business because of the dang groove. That was amazing. One nice thing about having quintuplets in there is the melody can just be what it normally is, and it's just the groove and the ghost notes that teach you what the quintuplets are, so it's easy to latch on to if you're familiar with this fabled tale of the itsy bitsy spider that did indeed climb up the water spout. Okay, next up. Okay, Ben Levin. What will Ben unleash on us? Always excited whenever Ben makes anything. Knowing Ben, he'll put something in here that's a bit nuts, a bit crazy, um, and will probably make me laugh because that's the kind of guy he is. Let's see what he did. I did the classic song about the farmer who had a dog named Bingo, but I did it in five. And I thought this would be a perfect song to do in five because we've got B-I-N-G-O. And instead of going B-I-N-G-O, B I N G O. Let's just go B I N G O. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And we got doggy barks to help us count. <laughs> dogs. Love the dogs. Of course. Yes. So we're in five now. It's a hip hop dub pound, this is brilliant. And that lead melody almost sounds like a cat meowing as well. <laughs> Man, the dog sounds. <laughs> I like slowly stretching it out like that. And then you don't get the last note. 
and the Meow Cat keyboard. I know the more that kids listen to this, they would get it. Almost like a soul. Okay, we're building. Oh, here we go. <laughs> nice riser. Okay, the meows have intensified. <laughs> These dogs are getting super irate. more than the original. <laughs> that was awesome. I love that. Adorable. I love the counting at the end as well, just to hit it home. I love the animal sounds. Like, setting aside the time signature stuff, I thought that was really cool as a way to make it feel fun for kids. Ben Levin Kids album win. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, we've got Amy Nolte. Amy Nolte. Uh, London Bridge by Amy Nolte. The track that I arranged was London Bridge. Or I think when I was little, I call it London Bridges. It's but it's it's just one bridge and it's falling down. It's a problem. When I started singing this to myself, it became kind of clear to me what I wanted to do, which was to make this arrangement be in alternating meters, actually starting in one meter, changing to another, keeping it for a bar, and then coming back. So da 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 da. That's six beats, and then da da da, and that's five beats. And then, and then five again, da, 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 and then six, da. So we go up six, five, five, six, six, five, five, six. And you could maybe think of it in 11, but I don't really. I just look at it as changing from back and forth from six to five to five to six. And I added some kind of clave with a djembe drum and I turned it into some kind of Latin based alternating meter thing thing that I think is really fun. You couldn't play it with two hands on the piano. You'd need four. I did it in two takes, but I hope you like it. A little change in time signature there. So I hear some fives and some sixes. Oh, it's got a little extra shift in it. percussion too. It's great. I can feel like this is something that you could find on the Brubeck record. Sunday morning kids music. This is in the background in the kitchen while you're making pancakes. of the accompaniment. What a great twist on the whole kid's ideas. Why not do it like this? It's beautiful. Yeah, everyone's killing it so far. I feel like that piece of music would go perfectly with breakfast. It sort of kept me on my toes while I was trying to count, but then I could just relax and sort of let it wash over me. In fact, it would make you want to start eating breakfast. I love the alternating time signatures. I think it really works. So that you could turn that music on and have breakfast to that music, even if you're not normally a breakfast person. When you're writing on time signature stuff, people tend to get really locked in because it's you kind of need to if it's tough to play in an odd time signature. But being able to like kind of pull push rhythmically over an odd time vamp sounds so cool. Feels so good. If breakfast is as good for kids as they say, this song's gonna save people's lives. What have we got now? Uh, Justice Cow, ring a ring o roses. Justice Cow, ring a ring o roses. By Justice Cow. My good friend, Jessica. Free time. Let's see what happens. How to make it truly free is an interesting question. 
I did Ring Around the Rosie, or also known as Ring a Ring a Roses, and I did it in free time, which required me to stretch at pushing and pulling the time. Not so much that you can't recognize it anymore, but enough so that like you couldn't reliably know when the next note's going to happen. And uh, my main struggle with this was just not making it creepy because it's literally used in horror movies. So I used a lot of Sufjan Stevens kinds of timbres um, and a lot of like plucking string instruments to brighten up the arrangement so it wouldn't be creepy and kids could listen to it while they go to sleep instead of be horrified. Play. Those are playground sounds. It's trippy. Mm. It feels like I've washed up on some weird desert island somewhere. It sounds really, really good in headphones. The panning effects. That's really fun. Reminds me of the Beatles. Like a revolver here. Oh. oh, this is really original. I like this. It's contemplative and ambient, but still hopeful somehow. It's not even like a rubato thing. It's like there's really just no time. Very cool. Oh, I, I love the wonky, the wonky sounds and the sort of slightly out of tune elements. It's a nice change for the collection, not just to be a bunch of polyrhythms. It's like the tempo is pushing and pulling. It feels. It's like waves coming in and out. Work, this actually would work really well on a Sigur Ross album as well as a kids album. I can totally, I mean, I'm, I'll show it to my kids later. I'm certain they'd love this. Oh, beautiful. It's kind of a relaxing way to doze off. Woo, Justice Cow. Wow, that sounds awesome. That was really nice. Wow, what a very, very different take. Just so nice. That one might be my favorite so far. It's a miracle that that wasn't creepy. I mean, Ring Around the Rosy in free time should be a nightmare, but that was beautiful. There was clearly no pulse, but I still felt like the notes were happening at the right time. It was pulling you through with that familiar melody, but I did not have the groove in my heart. David. Uh, David Bruce. Wind the bobbin up by David Bruce. With wind the bobbin up. Hello, my name is David Bruce. I'm a composer. And one of my first ever jobs actually was playing in a baby music class. So I know a lot of these songs inside out and it's a world I understand quite well. And Wind the Bobbin Up was always one of my favourite songs. There's something about the way that the rhythmic stresses move between the different sections. So you start with a sort of straight feel that has a bit of a dotted rhythm. Da, 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 da. Wind the bobbin up. And then you have the pull, pull, clap your hands. And then it suddenly switches into swung, at least in the version I know. Dun, dun, ga, dun, 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 ga, dun. So you've got these kind of three different ways that the rhythm moves. And it's I always enjoyed the little jolt as you moved into the next section. So when I came to writing it in 11.8, I tried to preserve some of these stresses. Obviously they move around in different parts of the bar, but I tried to give them still the same kind of emphasis that they have in the original. Here we go. I like the percussion. Okay, percussive start. Nice. That's cute. Eleven. I think it's an eleven. That's sweet. <laughs> the horns. I'm reacting. Yeah, it feels totally natural now. I love it. It's, it grooves really well, too. Take me away, David. Nice bass run there. The bass line is so good. <laughs> 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 
I like the bass fill. <laughs> so weaving melodies in the different parts, sort of contributing to the rhythm together. I think odd time signatures work best when they are very like light. This is awesome. <laughs> That was really cool. It's a really clever feel, David. Oh, that's great. It didn't really feel like too 1180, I guess. Like it's not jerking you around, even though it's an odd time signature. Uh, I love the syncopation. Um, that sort of really kind of throws you a little bit, but also makes it work and makes it really natural. Like a, <laughs> like a psychotic carnival dream. It's a vacation uh, from being an adult. Okay, Hickory Dickory Dock. This is Tantacruels. Tantacruel now. Hickory Dickory Dock. This one is Hickory Dickory Dock. And polyrhythm is the theme. Tantacruel Hickory Dickory Dock with polyrhythm. Let's go. My piece is a polyrhythmic Hickory Dickory Dock. Um, and I wanted to create this because it would be useful, I think, to help kind of introduce kids to the feel of polyrhythm without, you know, going into too much unnecessary explanation or detail. Um, starts off in 6 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1. Um, continues on just normally for a little bit. Then I introduce something in four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, and then a little bit later, I introduce something slightly more complicated in five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and the idea would be that kids could be able to pick out these individual patterns. And I've tried to differentiate them as much as possible so that they can do that and be able to sort of rhythmically hold their own until the end of the piece. So that's the idea. Really hope you like it. Here we go. Play. Echoey. Mysterious. Hmm, interesting chords. <laughs> Quite spicy chords. Okay, got a cross rhythm going on. I like that, like, descending line, the polyrhythm. There's that polyrhythm. So we're in triplets, and we have this hemiola. Very pretty. I really like that. All of the different elements are locking in. I could lock into any of the grooves and just be like, okay, I can feel this one, but then the others sort of feel nice on top of it and make it feel more complex. That one really matches my shirt. Okay, twinkle, twinkle, little star. The next one is twinkle, twinkle, little star. Twinkle, twinkle. By 12 tone. 12 tones. 12 tone. And this is 12 tone and it's additive meter. My song is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in non-repeating additive meter, which is basically instead of taking these large rhythmic uh, units like a bar or a phrase and then chopping them up into smaller pieces, you start with the small pieces, usually like two or three eighth notes, and then string them together. And the cool thing about that is that because you're not bound to these larger structures, you don't have to repeat. You can give each phrase its own unique sort of rhythmic character, kind of like free time, but with a pulse. When I was writing this, I knew I didn't want to include a chord progression because I felt like the changes would draw too much attention to the uneven rhythm. So instead I set the harmonized melody over a clapping chorus to sort of invite you to participate and try to clap along if you wanted to. Enjoy. Here we go. Okay, I've got a Brubeck unsquare dance vibe going on. I love the fourths with the clapping. That's, that's a cool texture. The parallel harmony. Chordal harmony. Is this like a pagan ritual to the stars? Is that what I'm listening to here? Where's the pattern? The meter. It's, it's doing something. And... <laughs> Oh, that was pretty sick. Whoa, that was so different. Very cool. Yes, the harmonic consistency there in each chord allowed me to focus or laser focus in on the uh, on the additive rhythm. Reminds me, I guess this is the obvious uh, thing to reference here, but First Circle by Pat Metheny uh, is a good example of this kind of additive meter and clapping vibe. Thank the Lord we know Twinkle Twinkle really well, because that really helps ground us in the concept. And I think that's the point of this whole project, right? We've got these simple melodies that we're all used to hearing that can sort of act as the compass with which we navigate all these crazy rhythmic concepts. 
Next tune is uh, David Bennett. Frere Jaca in 7 4. Frere Jaca. 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 For my piece, I took Frere Jaca and put it into a 7 4 time signature. Now, usually, Frere Jaca is in 4 4 with phrases of 8 beats. So ultimately, I had to find a way of trimming off one of those beats so the melody could fit into bars of 7 4. Beyond that, all I really did was spin out the melody a bit more and reharmonize it to keep it interesting. Here we go. Yeah, that really works in seven. Oh, it fits so nicely in seven. Exploring the different kind of syncopations you can use in seven. This nice lift. Oh, the harmony. The harmony has entered. <laughs> yeah, baby. Filthy. And quite a sweet reharmonization here as well. Nothing too crazy harmony wise, but it's really nice to go to the minor six like that to start it off. That's romantic AF, as they say. Nice. Nice. It's so smooth, so fluid. I can't like. I forgot it was in seven. Determination. Ooh, yeah. I like David Bennett's emotional chords. This is really nice. Okay. It's like real slow mo video shots of Furushaka getting out of bed. Very nice. Furish Arcus feel motivated to start his day. <laughs> kind of sounds like contemporary Christian harmony. <laughs> Can't escape it. No more oversleeping. I'm a changed man. I'm. This is my monastery. And I'm gonna ring that bell. <laughs> gonna get the whole stadium singing this in a minute. It's like going on a journey. Where are we going? After me! Frere Jaca. I feel like this version of the song is like a... I think I'm gonna try this one at bedtime. Like what they play like during a marathon in a movie. Ah, all, the, all the feels. Resolution coming. Mm, yeah. And I could totally imagine sitting down with one of my kids and just going, it's in seven, here's how this works. And just counting through. Yeah, first shocker really works in seven. That was great. And I feel inspired. I'm going to join a monastery. I feel like if parents had this music on for their kids all day, they would be less likely to divorce. You got to sort of explore different sides of seven with like different parts of the bar sort of chopped out. It'd make the baby fall asleep and the baby be in a peaceful, wonderful place and then might even make the parents want to sleep with each other. Okay, we've got 8-bit music theory. 8-bit music theory. 8-bit music theory. This is row, row, row. Row, 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 the boat. Tempo cannon. Hey guys, it's 8-bit music theory. You can't normally see my face, but you'll have to um, just take my word for it. Uh, so my tune was Row, Row, Row Your Boat, which is usually sung as a round, uh, where the melody is repeated but starting at different points um, relative to each other. And I thought it would be interesting to have each repetition of the melody uh, use a different kind of fundamental beat relative to the main pulse. So I have, you know, you have your normal 4-4 four, four quarter note beat, and then relative to that main beat, you know, you have one where the beat's a dotted eighth note, one where it's a dotted quarter note, one where it's equal to five sixteenth notes to kind of get the three, four, five, six thing. Anyways, hope you enjoy it. It's a little bit of a mess, but hope you enjoy it. Hell yeah, hit me with that Nankaro stuff. Let's go. Water sounds. I believe the boat. I'm in the boat. 
Okay, now what? Oh, whoa. <laughs> Did not expect the banjo. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's like a round. But... One. Wow. Sounds like Kanla Nankuro played on real instruments. It's so great. So many tempos happening. Feather <laughs> <laughs> oh here comes the tuba. <laughs> How many more are gonna join in? Like a foghorn. <laughs> Easily be different characters in, in a cartoon or something. Oh, well, they get it together in the end. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. <sighs> wow. Uh, <laughs> Next level, row, row, row your boat. That is absolutely fantastic. I love that so much. <laughs> it's it's a really bizarre thing to listen to because you're being pulled in many different directions. It's really cool effect. It makes the boat feel like it's rocking a lot. All these people in a boat rowing and the waterfall's coming up and no, they're not in sync. Like, I think this boat's going over the waterfall. It's goofy, but I think kids would really like it too because because it's so goofy. When instrumental music makes you laugh, you know you're on to something. Okay, Adam Neely's composition. Adam Neely. Okay, ants marching. Ants marching. And it's metric modulation this time, so I guess speeding up and slowing down? So I did ants marching using metric modulation, which is whenever you speed up or slow down to a new tempo using some kind of rhythmic relationship to an old tempo. And the classic example of this is double time, where the eighth note of an old tempo equals the quarter note of a new tempo, making it twice as fast. Double time swing. The first time you hear the ants marching melody, it's at 78 beats per minute. The second time you hear it, it's at 91 beats per minute, which is a seven to six relationship. So every sixth septuplet becomes the new quarter note. The musical effect of this is that it sounds like the melody is getting slightly faster. It's getting more exciting every time you hear it. It's just the relationships between each tempo have been very precisely calculated out. If you want to learn a little bit more about what's going on, there's a, an extended version of this video. Link is in the description over on Nebula. More on that later. But uh, yeah, this is Ants Marching with Metric Modulation. I like this arrangement already. So minimalistic. Okay. It's quite melancholic, really. <laughs> Something weird in the rhythm there. I can't quite. So some slight micro rhythm, interesting happiness going on here. Oh, that's speeding up. A little faster. <laughs> This is great, because when kids sing this song, I think they do tend to get faster. Okay, now we're into quintuplets. Very cool timbres. And great groove. I like the hand claps. What's he gonna do next? Faster! <laughs> nice. Okay. Oh, that is so cool. Quintuplet into straight sixteenth. Yeah, <laughs> that's really cool. Because there's so much interesting stuff happening. Those percussion sounds are great. What are they? Eight oh eight. Yeah. <laughs> Even faster. <laughs> Ooh. Whoa. Triplets. Okay. Let's go the beat. Yeah, this very much feels like we're sort of at different levels of a video game here, like banjo kazooie vibes or something. Add and Neely, the video game. Yeah. Okay, that was really cool. <laughs> it was very cute, actually. The the rhythm and the tempo is all sort of come to fruition. Like every one of the switches caught me by surprise. I knew they were coming. Like I can recognize a pattern, but like it was still because because there were other things changing. It's just like every one hit. Another one that I really think kids could latch on to and want to listen to again and again. Those ants, they sure were marching a lot. I hope they get some rest. All right, that's all of them. Very nicely done, everybody. Uh, I dig the tunes. It was a, a pleasure making music alongside y'all. I feel like each one of these, you can really 
you know, move your body to. You don't have to really count too much. It's just always this like, yeah, yeah, we're bouncing along, which I think is perfect for, you know, young young kids. That was just a um, really interesting and much more varied set of pieces than I expected. And that was really, really entertaining to listen to. Well, that was really fun. If I'm honest, I think the two that I really liked were the ones that used mainly acoustic instruments, so Amy's and 8-bit music theories. I think it's good if the music has something that the babies will listen to, but also the adults who have to listen along with them. So I think the whole premise behind all of this is great, trying to make baby tunes a little bit more interesting. And I think for me, Amy's was the one that you could definitely imagine being on in an adult environment without it sounding out of place. So I want to thank Alan Stewart again for helping to organize this. If you want to watch a longer and much more in-depth analysis of my arrangement of Ant's marching and the metric modulation that goes alongside it, you can watch it in the extended version of this video available exclusively on Nebula. Nebula is a streaming service that I joined recently specifically so I wouldn't have to worry about demonetization and false copyright claims on YouTube, which have been quite the bane of my existence as a music educator. You'll find on the platform many of YouTube's top educational channels, including 12 Tone, who contributed to Tuplets for Toddlers, Thomas Frank, Legal Eagle, Wendover Productions, Up and Atom, and many, many more. It's a great place to watch and discover really great quality content ad-free, as well as support your favorite creators. Nebula is supported in part by Curiosity Stream, today's sponsor, the go-to source for the very best documentaries on the internet with thousands of titles to choose from. If you sign up for Curiosity Stream using the link in the description or curiositystream.com slash Adam Neely, you'll also get access to a Nebula subscription for free. What's more is that for a limited time, the price of a year's subscription to both Curiosity Stream and Nebula is just $14.79, a 26% discount. By signing up to Curiosity Stream with the link in the description, you're not only helping out this channel, but the entire educational community on YouTube as we build a platform for thoughtful content content that engages the world in a meaningful way. So thanks everybody for watching. I'd be very curious to hear your reactions to these tupleted toddler tunes. It was very exciting for me to hear everybody else's arrangements uh, based on this prompt of creating odd metered children's music. Uh, leave the comment in the comment section. I will go check them out. And anyway, uh, until next time everybody. Peace.